Let's open up the Vintage Collection 3.75 inch action figure of General Harrison Dooler from the Ahsoka series. Villa Verikino. If it's Star Wars, we collect it. Hello there and thanks for visiting Villa Verikino. I absolutely love the character of Harrison Dooler ever since she was first introduced to us in the animated series Rebels and I was really excited to see her featured so prominently in the live action series Ahsoka. We recently did a rewatch of the Ahsoka series in preparation for meeting the actress that played Shin Hati in the series, Ivana Sakno. We met her recently at a local convention and of course rewatching Ahsoka really got me in the mood to open up some more of the Ahsoka series collectibles that I still have in their packaging like this vintage collection figure of General Harrison Dooler portrayed by Mary Elizabeth Winstead in this series. I really like this figure. She looks pretty cool in the packaging but I think it's time to get her out so I can add her to my loose action figure display. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Coming up really soon I'll take a closer look at the figure and all of the details but first let's take one last look at the backing card. Of course the backing card style for the vintage collection references the vintage action figure line by Kenner from the 1970s and 80s. Up the top here we have the iconic Star Wars logo encircling the Ahsoka series logo here in red and a single chrome racetrack surrounding the character photo here and it's a really nice clear promotional photo of Hera Sedula from the show where we can see her costume details. She is well lit, it's a nice high-res image. I really like it. And I think it's really interesting that for General Harrison Dooler we have this really vibrant purple accent color for the nameplate here with white text of course up here and of course behind the figure here as well. I guess purple is a nice contrast to both orange and green there so featured prominently on the figure itself. Hera doesn't come with too many accessories. We have a small blaster pistol here as well. She looks like she's got a holster here as well. Nothing much else here but I'm still keen to get her out out all of her costume details. There's some really fun small details and some really nice articulation there by the looks of it as well. Moving on to the back we have that same accent color used here across the back. This is the modern style of backing card for the vintage collection here where we no longer have that black print. I kind of like this color here, the vibrant purple. This is number VC300. We've got an image here of the front of the backing card and instead of an image we have a photo here of the toy itself posed. We can see her holding her blaster pistol. I always quite like it when we have an image of the toy rather than just the promotional images of the characters. It sort of helps me remember the accessories they have and it's just a fun idea for some posing options there as well. We also have a blurb here but this isn't actually much about the character. This one's a little bit different. It reads, since 2010, the vintage collection has paid homage to the iconic Kenner toy era of Star Wars history. VC300 celebrates the line with General Hera Syndulla for the first time on a TVC card back which I think is kind of interesting. They don't often kind of reference the toy line. It's generally a sort of a not too spoilery blurb introducing us to the character. And that blurb there is repeated in a few different languages. The rest of the backing card, we have the vintage collection logo there, of course, barcode, copyright, all of that kind of stuff there on the back. The purple is really striking. This looks fantastic if you want to keep your action figure carded. But for me, I think it's time to get this one open. So let's get cracking. Now I have the General Harrison Dooler action figure and her tiny blaster pistol out of the packaging so we can go over all of the details and of course I'm going to start with Hera herself. So I'm going to go over all of the painting details because one of the first things that I noticed of course when you get her out of the box is the printing here on her jacket that is completely hidden when she is on her backing card. Of course she has some really cool graphics on her iconic sort of rebel jacket here and one of the striking elements that you can see when she's on her backing card is this fantastic design on the back of her jacket where we have white, green and black there. Really nice printing there. On her arm here we have the Rebels sort of version of the Rebel Bird. There's a tiny little mark on this particular action figure but still some really nice printing. I like the fact that we've still got a little bit of a nod to the Rebels design of the Rebel Bird. Of course in the live action era we generally have the Rebellion logo that we know very well with the very straight upright Rebel Bird. I like that sort of nod to the Rebellion sort of variation there that we see in the animated series and on this side 
side we have a small circular orange and yellow symbol there and of course she is a general so now she has a rebellion rank badge here where we have a grid of five red dots on a square silver plate there on her jacket the rest of the paint job looks pretty tidy there's not a lot of detail on her lower half she just has some silver accents here to her belt slash holster that is coming down on her hips so we've got some really nice little silver details there and the belt buckle there as well and of course we've got just a tiny bit poking out here in the back as well but taking a closer look at her head because of course Hera is a twi'lek with a striking green skin and she has some really interesting patterns on her leku here and it's a little bit hard to see because the green is so bright but we've got this white circular design running down her leku here in the back really nice it runs around the sides sometimes with these sort of uh, rounded surfaces sometimes the printing is only sort of on one surface there is perhaps not as much on the inside edges here you can see this one in particular the design doesn't go all the way around that's got to be tricky because by the time we're getting in there that's a little bit more closer to not quite 360 but that's quite a sort of rounded surface but I do like the fact that we've got a lot of it visible on the outside edges here particularly on this one I really like that and as usual she is a modern action figure I really like this era of digital printing for character faces she's got quite striking makeup if you've ever worn sort of a body paint to this extent you know you kind of need to amp up your makeup to kind of make your features stand out strong colors tend to sort of wash away a lot of your features so we've got some striking makeup here as she has in the show to sort of really highlight her eyes and her eyebrows to help them stand out against that degree green skin tone there and we've even got some sort of pink lips there as well really nice and of course we've got silver goggles here worn over her sort of leather headpiece here as well we've got some black there accenting the lenses of her goggles they don't move they are fixed on to her head but I would be very worried about breaking these tiny little attachment points if they did indeed move and we don't really see her using them over her eyes in the show so I don't mind that they don't move that they are sculpted there in place there so that is the paintwork there we've got a little bit of some accent stripes down the front of her shirt it's a little bit of a sort of a burgundy color coming down here as well just these stripes and it matches the color on the collar of her undershirt there as well and we've got a little bit of an accent color for the collar of her jacket there as well overall pretty tidy I just like the color scheme of this it's just really fun with the sort of striking orange and green you know obviously sort of we see a lot of the pilots of Star Wars wearing a bright orange she's not a full x-wing pilot she generally flies her um, beloved ghost um, but I like that she's still got that sort of orange nod to sort of the pilots of the rebellion there and I like that she's kind of got it kind of gives me sort of aviator jacket vibes especially with the sort of color accent here around the collar there really cool love her outfit in the show so of course let's go over the articulation so one thing that I'm curious is I think yes this belt is actually not sculpted as a solid piece and I kind of really like the fact that it is just sitting on her and I don't actually see uh, I think it's maybe attached in the back there you can just kind of see a little bit of a slot in her back because I can kind of move it around here a little bit at the front but it does feel somewhat fixed in place and we can see if I just move her arm up out of the way that it comes all the way down to her right leg and it looks pretty tight this is a pretty snug little sort of ring here around her thigh I don't know particularly with this uh, pocket here that's sculpting it's kind of creating a ridge I don't know that I can really move this up and down a lot sometimes you can move the holsters around a little bit this one is very tight on her leg I can move it just a little bit but and honestly I'm probably moving her thigh here a little bit more than that but keen to test out that blaster accessory in the holster it's very small but it does have a little bit of a rubbery feel to it not as rubbery as some others I felt but I can just kind of squish that close so that should hold the blaster pistol quite nicely 
but I really like the fact that we've got fairly free shoulders on this figure. Just going to test out the head of course. We can generally get really good movement from the heads but she does have Twi'lek Leku so they do actually fit fairly well over her shoulders so we can turn her head uh, a decent way around and we can really see that design there on her jacket there as well. The Leku are just a little bit flexible and not too bendy though I probably am going to be careful so as to not to sort of permanently bend them by having her head uh, resting her Leku on her shoulders because that's going to start to sort of point them in a different direction. They are nice and clear off the back there. They don't sort of rub. Um, if I put her head right up they just touch. But yeah, it's always fun when, when you can sort of have an interesting alien creature in Star Wars, but you still don't lose the sort of the posability of the head there as well with these long head tails there. But let's work on the arms. We've got pretty good clearance here from the sculpting of the jacket. Sometimes it does give the effect of sort of a vest and sleeves. We do get a little bit of that appearance here because there is this sort of cut in here but of course we need to be able to move characters arms so that's kind of just one of those things that we uh, have there. So oh I can see that this jacket sort of vest section here is actually fairly flexible. You can see I can sort of pull it quite open uh, which not that I'm actually going to utilize that in any kind of way for posing there but that's just just kind of interesting to see. We can see a little bit more of the detail. Plain colors there on the inside and of course we've got that articulation here at the top of her orange pants there. It's a little bit tight and clicky. I can get a little bit more of the sort of forward and back movement there. It's uh, it's a little bit a little bit stiff there, a little bit clicky. I can sort of turn her to the side. The side she kind of wants to flick back. I don't like, sometimes it makes me anxious when I hear those clicks. I don't want to break anything. There's a subtle audible difference between sort of a clicking into place and the fact that you're kind of breaking something. So I'm just going to be very careful about twisting her to the side. And for certain characters, she doesn't do sort of action poses in quite the same way. Her skills are as a pilot. So I don't need her to be sort of particularly flexible um, with that. But yeah, let's check out her arms fully. Uh, that elbow joint is kind of stiff there. Just getting that one into there. Okay, so we can get we can get all the kind of standard articulation there on her arms. Quite a deep elbow. I can get it all the way to there as well. And we can get some rotation in a little bit. It's this this particular joint is just a little bit stiff there. Just going to be a little bit careful with that one. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of uh, sort of playing with your toys to sort of loosen up the articulation joints because they've been in their packets for a little while. But I like how tight I can get those arms there. I can get her hands all the way up. She doesn't have a comm link or anything like that. It kind of makes me want to sort of like she's talking into something um, with that particular pose but she doesn't come with any kind of communicator accessory. Her hands have uh, just that's kind of rotation, very small wrists. And if I can put her hands down so we can see them a little bit better. We've got an extended trigger finger on this hand or so that's going to work quite well for the blaster pistol hopefully and just a standard sort of grip here. The top finger is just a tiny bit uh, extended there but not enough to kind of insert into a trigger guard there. Of course we can very easily see the sculpting on her pants. She has fitted pants and the bright color really does make these sculpting lines and the articulation joints really stand out here. So we can see the articulation here at the hips. Very easy to see. We've got that articulation point at the top of the thighs so that we can rotate them in and outwards. The the articulation for the knees is really well hidden I think with the sculpting for the pants coming around there. You just kind of see it more at the back there. You can see that. And then of course we have articulation in her black boots. This particular figure she's got pretty good articulation around the ankles. She had her ankles a little bit twisted when I got her out of the packet. I'm definitely going to have to be spending a little bit of time just to make sure that she can stand fully upright. And there is something that I noticed um, just while checking this figure out is that looking up close under the lights this part is made out of orange plastic this is made out of black plastic for the boots and you can just make it out because there is just a little bit of a difference and a few patches here where the paint has actually just had a little bit of sort of a wear 
to it so we're getting just a little bit of that darker color and I think that that's kind of interesting I guess they figured it was easier to paint these orange sections than it was to paint this black so there is just a little bit of a difference in the orange you can kind of see this is that orange plastic and then this is a painted orange pretty good color match though we also have that at the top of the thighs as well this looks painted um, and then the legs I think this part is plastic that's what that's what it's reading to my eyes but this part here this this part looks painted just in just in the way that it's sort of reading to my eyes it could be plastic actually but tricky that yes that might be this this all might be orange plastic and then it's just these parts here now I'm doubting myself because of how close of a good match this paint here is to the legs but yes let's check out the articulation I'm going to start with the knees first you can kind of see the black coming through a little bit more when I bend the knees because of course articulation is going to just bend and scratch the paint a little bit we're going to get a little bit more wear and tear but bearing bending her knees over we can see that there they are very stiff and the way that the pants come down and kind of in the back means I'm getting to about there before that wants to stop there and of course we've got a little bit of rotation there as well but yes I'm probably not going to utilize her knees so much in that direction of course if I have um, the HasLab ghost then perhaps I might want to try and sit her down but I think this holster is really going to prevent that I'm not really sure how well okay I can actually that's kind of surprising I wasn't sure how much uh, posability I was going to get with this leg but I can actually lift it to this point of course it does bubble the holster a little bit up but I don't feel like I'm stressing it too much of course we're getting just a little bit of tension through this back strap here but that looks like a pretty solid attachment point and we've just sort of made it looser here on the front so I guess if I wanted to sit her down I can get to about that point point there before it really starts to stress it doesn't want to go up higher than that so it's not a complete sort of straight angle like she was sitting on a chair but I could probably get her into a reasonable seated position there now just going to straighten her legs back up of course we can see that we've got the rotation on that an angle there as well it's a little bit trickier on this one because the grip of this is kind of holding her thigh in place I can kind of get it going um, but I don't want to put too much tension on this with sort of rotating it around from these attachment points there but I can see that on this leg I can get a much higher straighter angle so we do have a little bit of restriction from this holster but it is part of her costume I would want it there because um, I'm probably not going to be having this particular character in a seated position though of course when fans eventually get to that HasLab ghost we'll be able to sort of create a live action Ahsoka version of it even though it is more of the Rebels animated series version but yeah now I've got her standing up pretty solidly there having a little bit of a play around with her ankles I can finally get her into a very solid position there I've kept her arm extended because let's go and take a look at this tiny little blaster pistol it's so small I'm going to struggle to hold it up so there we go it's a really sort of flat but we've actually still got some sculpted raised details there we can see we've got a complete circular loop for the trigger guard and we've even got two tones of metallic accent paint we've got a bit more of sort of a bronze color here and a gold in there and on the other side same again two accent metallic colors there tiny little grip it's so small this is the sort of thing where I'm really hoping it's going to fit well in her hands or in her holster so I don't lose it I know that accessories for the 3.75 inch action figure line can be small back in the day we had some comically large accessories so I'm really glad we do have well scaled accessories but I'm just hoping that this will fit nicely in her hands so I'm just going to put that in there I'm hoping that her trigger finger will fit into that guard well that is nice okay she holds that well you can see her finger just kind of poking into the trigger guard that's a really nice pose there and it looks really well scaled to her of course as a pilot she doesn't need a huge weapon but she's got it there for sort of landing and going on scouting missions I like that that's that feels like a really good scale and pose for her I like that accessory even though it's really tiny it just kind of completes her 
looks really nice okay so I'm just going to pop that out I really like the way it looks in her hand though but I just want to quickly test to see what it looks like in her holster here as well this is one of those ones where I'm hoping it's a tight fit so that it doesn't fall out but not too tight that I can't get it out so that's a very tight fit actually that's very tight okay so I am struggling to get it in more than that so very tight you can kind of see we've got a little bit of a sculpting here to sort of fit that trigger guard I don't think it's actually designed to go in much further than that we don't have a gap at the bottom that kind of gives us a little bit more space so it's not going to go completely in there but it does match up with the line of the leather straps here at the top it's not going past that strap so it does look like that is kind of about where it's supposed to sit and that does look pretty good and I'm not too worried about trying to get it out it's probably going to be a little bit of a wriggle um, because it's so small it's hard to get a full grip on it but yes I can get it out there we go but I think it just looks fantastic in her hand and so that is probably how I'm going to have it I just oh it looks great really nice it's fun to see so much little sculpting paint and details there on such a small accessory to be honest it would probably look just as cool being a flat gray but I really like that attention to detail with those metallic paint finishes there as well she holds it really well and of course she just looks fantastic and she stands up really nice really happy with this one I think it's a really good likeness we've got some fantastic costume details and printing just have those tiny little tiny little marks here on that lower section that is painted there but because it's kind of on the lower part of your body it kind of reads like a little bit of weathering there I just really like the costume details and the paintwork on the rest of the figure fantastic I love her outfit in the Ahsoka series and I think this is a really good interpretation of her on-screen outfit in action figure form so of course Hera first appears in Rebels and Rebels did have its own line of action figures in that very distinctive animated style so I'm just going to quickly grab that particular figure here so you can see I've got her on a clear stand she's a little bit wonky because the peg holes in these particular figures were a little bit too small for my standard action figure stands but she has very small proportions and she does need a little bit more stability to stand up and of course the animated rebels figures were in that uh, so we say unfortunate five point of articulation era it kind of worked for the animated style Style. they had very slender limbs I doubt we would have got much articulation especially when you see here on her arms I doubt we would have been able to really fit that much in here and the stylized kind of works these were toys for an animated series so I, I feel like they were sort of more targeted to a younger generation that were going to be using these as toys rather than figures so I don't really mind the fact that these were at five point of articulation but I'm just so excited that we now have characters like Hera in a live action series so we get a much more articulated detailed version of the character I love both looks but there's just something about the detail of this new action figure it's just fantastic you can see she's got her sort of uh, cartoony sort of orange pants here and those uh, white detail markings on her leku don't actually cover much of the back here we've just got sort of a little bit of a print down on the sides as soon as I turn it to the back they look blank so I'm really happy that this live action one has a much greater coverage there of that pattern just just one of those elements that we really love about the uh, live action figures from the uh, uh, vintage collection and you can see the tiny little blaster it was just a tiny little flat blaster there from that original animated one but it's really fun I'll see if I can get it to stand up her feet are just so tiny she doesn't stand up very well but yeah interesting that there is such a height difference as well of course Mary Elizabeth Winstead isn't particularly short um, so I think she's probably a pretty good scale of course these toys were shall we say just more toys not really figures for collectors I still have most of the Ribbles series because I loved the show but yes I'm so happy to finally have a full dare I say proper action figure of Hera because I think she's fantastic I'm still waiting for more of the live action Ahsoka series I want to see more of Hera and all of those characters I know there are still many more of the Ahsoka 
Focus series characters coming out in the Vintage Collection line that I'm just absolutely so, so very excited about, including a live action version of Grand Admiral Thrawn, Shin Hati, and Balin Skull. We have seen those announced in the pipeline reveals in a recent Hasbro live stream. I really can't wait to add more Ahsoka series action figures to my collection. This Hera figure is fantastic. Really excited to finally get her off the backing card so I can see all of those details, including that really neat print on the back of her jacket. So this has been a really fun unboxing. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today as I opened up another Star Wars collectible, checked out all of her cool details, and had a lot of fun. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the galaxy, and let's hang out again very soon for more Star Wars fun. May the Force be with you. If you're a Vintage Collection fan, I've also opened up the Professor Hu Yang figure. That video is linked here in case you haven't already seen it, as well as a whole Vintage Collection playlist. This is the way.